Hey guys, it's Linux Benchmarks here. In today's video, we are going to be installing Debian as my main distro of choice for playing future games, installing apps and such. And I've been running uh, Fedora as my main distro. If you watched my previous video, I talked about why I used Fedora for so long. And I think it's time that I try and move to a different distro and try and made it. I mean, I've, I have distro hop to other distros, but I always... I always hop back to Fedora, but Debian was one that I actually enjoyed a lot, but I had one little issue that I didn't really have time for as I was just, you know, making other videos, playing games, live streaming that um, I didn't really want to fix that issue. So I just hopped back to Fedora for now, but I'm going to move back to Debian today in today's video and we're going to set it up fully. Uh, I've got a recording on my second PC. So we're going to actually install on my main computer and I'm going to install all my applications. We're going to set up Steam um, for like, you know, playing games. I'll show off some, uh, some gameplay of the games that I usually play. Um, and yeah, um, also I want to thank the first supporter on this channel. I'm pretty sure it's Nulla Reno. I, th I think that's his username. Uh, I want to thank you for being uh, my first supporter. I really do appreciate it. Um, if you guys want to, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Um, and if you want to, you can definitely become a supporter. Um, by no means you do not need to do that, um, but it would be really appreciated. So the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to go to the Debian.org website to grab the ISO. I'm going to click the download button here to grab the stable version of Debian. Um, it's just going to grab the ISO for us. I think it's about what? It is 628 megabytes. And this is kind of good because if you have an internet connection, which probably most of you do, um, it will basically like download all the packages when you go to install Debian on your computer. If you're coming from uh, Windows when it comes to uh, flushing an ISO on a USB stick, uh, some software that you can use is Rufus or Bellina Etcher. Uh, these are two great applications for flushing an ISO onto a USB stick. Uh, but for me specifically, I'm just going to use the KDE ISO Image Writer. Um, and there's plenty of other ones that you can grab on the uh, you know, on the store. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to use the ISO image writer for this one. Okay, and then we're going to select our ISO. We're going to create it, continue. It's going to format it, type in our password, and it's going to flush the ISO onto the USB stick. All right, and as you can see here, it's done flushing. So the next thing we want to do is boot into the USB. Well, this is kind of weird. Um, my recording on my capture card is not actually capturing my screen on here because this is through not a desktop environment. Um, we're actually not like in the operating system. So we're gonna have to shoot this on my phone. As we can see here, there's no video on this. So we're gonna have to just go through it like this way. Um, so the first thing here, we can select our language. We can also click continue. Um, I'm gonna select um, Australia for mine, um, English, American English. It's going to detect our uh, mount installation media. As you can see here, sorry for the the bad <laughs> camera movement. Um, I really apologize for this, but it's just going to have to be like this. All right, and this is where we'll create our host system. So our name for the host. Um, I'm going to call mine probably just, um, I really don't even know. Actually, I'll just keep it Debian. I think Debian will be, God, this is so hard to do this, multitasking with this. Uh, domain name. No, we don't need that. Um, then we want to skip the root password. Um, and then we want to give our full name. I'm just going to do Netty. Um, and then... Yep, for our new account, select our password. Mine will just be real simple for now. I'm just like this for the clock. Now it's gonna detect our disks. And we're gonna select use entire disk. Uh, I'm gonna select our 500 gig NVMe drive because that's where we're gonna install it. Click continue. Um, it's gonna be an all-in-one partition. This is recommended for new users. Um, you can separate them if you want to, but I'm not going to. And click continue, click continue. Yes, I would like you to write changes to this disk. And now it's going to install the base system. Uh, configure the package manager. So this is where you'll select the repo uh, server location. Uh, so wherever you are in the world, you would select it here. So mine's Australia. 
I'm going to choose the Debian, uh, the dot, the dev.debian.org uh, repo slash so like server. Continue. It's going to configure the APT. Uh, so the next thing we can do here is we can um, send basically data to the Debian team um, so they can like, you know, uh, look at it, like statistics and stuff like that to show off. Um, I'm going to click yes, because why the hell not? Debian is a lit community. Um, next is where we get to choose our desktop environment. So I'm going to choose KDE Plasma. This is my main desktop of choice. Uh, I don't really like GNOME that much. Um, but if you like GNOME, definitely keep it on the default. Um, there is plenty of other ones you can choose. So I'm going to click continue. And this is uh, where it's going to install the desktop for us. All right, as you can see here, the installation is complete. So it is time to boot into your new system. Make sure to remove the installation media so that you boot into the new system rather than restarting the installation. So we're gonna click continue here and I'm going to remove my USB stick. And now it should boot into Debian for us. As you can see here, here's our bootloader, our grub, the system D, and here we are. We're <laughs> at the login screen. We can just log in. Yeah, we're, we're in. <laughs> we're, we're in Debian now. All right, so now that we're actually in Debian now, um, I want to do a couple of things when it comes to uh, customizing KDE to the way that I like it. So I was just making sure that my capture device was working properly. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is turn on dark mode because I don't want a uh, white mode at all. <laughs> and then, I'm probably going to go to my mouse to turn off mouse acceleration. Just leave it on flat. Now it's on flat. Um, there's a couple other things like the KDE wallet. I don't want that. I don't want to set up any encryption type stuff um, for different apps. Uh, usually on my audio, I like to you know, put this to 100%. I like to let this just be an output. Uh, I'm not going to use this as input because there's no mic on my IEMs. Um, usually there'd be a mic here, but this mic is on my second PC at the moment, so I'll change that later. Power management, I like to turn this stuff off. Um, button handling to shut down when I press it. I like to go to your workspace behavior, go to screen locking, uh, turn the screen locking off. Uh, go to the screen edges, turn this to no action at all, so nothing happens when I put my cursor up at the top left screen. I also like to go into edit mode and remove the peek at desktop because I never use that. Now, the next thing that I would probably do is update Debian. I'm pretty sure that Debian already updated the PC as it downloaded a bunch of packages, but I might be wrong here. I am not wrong. It's already up to date. Um, so I guess the next thing that we'll do is actually switching uh, switching Debian to testing as I'm not going to stay on the stable version as I would like to play some games and I don't want to use like Firefox ESR, which is like the um, long-term Firefox version uh which is like just kind of like a, just like an lts version of firefox you could say so after customizing kde plasma uh the next thing you want to do is change our source list on debian so if we go to the wiki.debian.org slash sources list and we go to the um, slash etc slash apt slash sources dot list uh, we're going to copy this if you're on gnome um, you probably have the software properties gtk package installed so you can just go to the applications menu settings software updates and you can change the source list there but i'm on kd plasma so i don't have that so what i'm going to have to do is use my text editor in my terminal which is nano and do pseudo nano uh, slash etc slash apt slash sources dot list um, and then we want to um edit these out by adding a hash, which means that it won't be used. Um, and for me, I'm gonna use SID, which is unstable. And um, so I'm just gonna change these two here. Um, as you can see here, um, this would actually be called bookworm, uh, but I'm gonna change it to just SID and I've already done it. So after that's done, you wanna do control X and then Y to um, save the name and then click enter, I think it is. And then you just wanna do sudo apt update. Uh, to make it refresh the list of, of uh, repos and uh, packages and such. And then you want to do sudo apt upgrade. And I've already done this. So there's uh, one package I need to remove. So I do sudo apt auto remove. And then after all that upgrading is done, uh, you just want to restart the computer. Okay, and then now what I'm going to do is remove the Firefox ESR 
version. And then if I do sudo apt install Firefox, it should be able to find it on the sid repo, which it seems like it has, and it's already installing it. And now it's installed for us. So if you exit out of this one, unpin this, and we research for Firefox, we should have the uh, like the mainline version of Firefox, which is uh, 1.19 at the moment. So you can see here, it's 1.19.0. .9, so the next thing that we want to do is install uh, the NVIDIA drivers on Debian. Now I'm on Debian SID, so what I have to do is basically add uh, this uh, repo here to my source list. So if we go back to the source list, which is uh, right here, we can just copy this. We can do sudo nano. And then if we add this, we can add this really anywhere. I could just add it like right under here, um, paste it. And then if I do control X, Y, save. Um, and then if I do this command here, which will install the video driver, or I should know, we would do apt update first. Uh, just so we can see it. Uh, we have some icon problem. That's fine, I guess, for now. I'll fix that later. Uh, but we want to do the sudo apt install new video driver. And as you can see here, it has found it. So we would just click Y to install it. And then it would reboot. And then it would switch to the new video driver for your new video, new video graphics card. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is install Steam. Now, we could install the Flatpak version if we wanted to Steam. That's what I did last time. Uh, but I'm going to try and install the system one through the Debian repo. So we have to add the uh, Contrib uh, non-free repo, which we just added before for the NVIDIA drivers. So I'm pretty sure if we add this architecture, because that was an issue I was having before, I can see here, it's um, requiring the um, i386 libs, which I don't have or broken package basically um so we have to do this or we have to do sudo needs permission for that to add it and then we just do sudo apt update and then the next thing is to install the steam installer which should install it for us yeah also this is my uh my like first time you know running debian so this is kind of this is very new to me uh learning stuff through the terminal um on on debian uh, so this is a lot different from Fedora. There's a lot of packages that are missing, it seems. Um, but I do understand that like, you know, like Mesa Vulkan drivers and all that sh stuff is already um, installed for us. So Steam should be installed, right? Steam is, yeah. And now it will actually install Steam for us. Because what we installed before was a Steam installer. Um, so it basically just launches the Steam installer. Um, we could have just gone the route of grabbing the .debian package from the Steam website. That probably would have been way easier. But um, I kind of just wanted to do it from Debian itself. And that seems to be working out um, quite fine. And uh, the Debian wiki seems uh, pretty easy to understand. Uh, kind of similar to the Arch wiki. Very similar to it, I would say. Um, so this is a lot of help. If you need any help um, and you can't you know, understand any like YouTubers explaining stuff you, and you're running Debian or Arch um, or even like Fedora as well, you can go to their wikis um, to install different uh, packages and stuff like that. Probably while um, Steam is updating, we can enable the FlatHub uh, repo in the Discover store. So if we go here, it should appear. We have to add the Flatpak backend. So we just click install, type in our password, and then that should add it. And then if we, I think if we close Discover, reopen it, go back to settings, we can add the FlatHub repo itself like that and I'm pretty sure uh, this will either require a restart or um, killing the uh, discover process and basically just restarting discover fully um, as you can see here it's already added it um, and is this from the FlatHub repo it is all right so yeah FlatHub's already enabled for us so we can start installing any um, FlatHub packages that we want which I have a bunch that I need to install um, that I have a list on uh, a document file and as you can see here steam is set up as well so I'm going to sign into Steam. Okay, and now that Steam is set up, we're going to go to our settings on Steam. We're going to go to our downloads, and we're going to disable our shader precache, as we do not need that anymore. We want to go to our compatibility, enable Steam Play for all of the titles. 
um, and I'm going to enable uh, Proton 8.0-4 because um, I don't like to run the experimental in all my games. I feel like if a game already works on Proton 8 well enough, like there's no issues, then there's no point in running experimental. Um, and then if I want, like let's say a game doesn't work on Proton 8, then I will use experimental to see if it actually improves anything or fixes the issues that are happening on a specific game. So after this, we're going to restart Steam. I'm also going to um, install GNOME Disk. I, I don't know if that's available. Um, it is, so we can install on that. Um, so then I can uh, remount my disk, my second uh, SSD that I have for my game. So then I can actually play games on Steam. I'm just going to go here. I'm going to edit the mount. I'm going to turn this off and then I'm going to change the mount point, change it to slash games, type in my password, remount it. And then we've also got a window partition as well. I'm going to have to reset that back up again. Uh, we want to go to our settings. We want to go to storage. Um, I'm pretty sure it will find it, as we can see here. Um, and then if we go to our library, we can see it's detected all of our games. So we can try out some games right now. Um, game mode should already be installed. It might not be. We'll, we'll see how this goes. Um, we don't even need to use game mode really, uh, we can use whatever the hell we really want. Um, we'll just leave this off, wait for the um, Steamworks common uh, thing to update for us, it shouldn't take that long. Also, um, uh, there is an issue on Debian with Steam having slow download speeds and I'm seeing it right now. Um, I'm only getting about mm, like 40, 40 down, I have around 80 down, so I'm going to install this uh, DNS Thing here. I don't know if this will actually work. I'm pretty sure last time I tried it, it didn't work, but I'm going to try it again as I think I didn't set it, I didn't set it up properly. Um, so we just, you know, want to do our pseudo apt update. Um, then we want to do apt install the DNS uh, mask. I think that's, that's what it's called. Um, oh, I know. And then we want to grab uh, resolve conf. And then we want to do a service uh, restart for these so that they're actually like active. All right, and then the download should be fixed. If it's not, I do remember uh, someone on Reddit telling me of another fix. So I'll probably go do that if it doesn't work. Um, but uh, we'll test out Apex Legends right now. We'll see if uh, that wants to launch with game mode. I don't know if game mode's actually installed. Let me see here, apt install game mode it's not installed all right now if we click play on apex legends it should launch with game mode active i always play on singapore servers because no one plays really um in australia i would say uh, but we can go to the firing range you can see the game is loading here and we can um muck around and um at the moment um cash is being loaded so the um game is a bit stuttery currently I jumped in a bit too quickly, but things are smoothing out really quickly now. As you can see here, the game is working. Uh, some people did say in my comments that, uh, you know, that I wasn't showing gameplay in my other one when I set up games for uh, for Linux. Um, and I just went into the, into the menu and I didn't really show any gameplay. So just to show here that gameplay is working, you know, here's Apex is working. Uh, perfectly fine. There is no audio because I'm recording on my second PC and I don't have any audio routing to the second PC. So sorry that you can't hear the audio, but the game is working uh, really well. But anyways, yeah, Apex does work. And yeah, we, we can install things like Mango Hut as well if you want to. We can probably grab the um, Go Overlay application. Um, if we have a look here, Go Overlay does exist. So we can set that up for us. Um, and that's really about it. You know, everything else is through uh, flat packs. So, you know, like bottles, for example. Um, I would grab that. I would grab Lutris. Um, there is a system version. I'm going to grab the flat pack version of Lutris as I just prefer my most of my apps being in flat pack. I'm also going to grab Discord as I really do need that. Um, and yeah, there's this. There's nothing really else to do on Debian now that we have it set up. Now now that we're on Debian un Unstable, we've got Steam set up. Um, I'm going to install OBS as well for like live streaming on, on Kick. So if you guys want to watch me as well, uh, I do stream pretty regularly now. I do have good, in uh, decent internet to live stream on, uh, you know, Twitch or Kick. I do stream on Kick.com. So Kick.com uh, slash Pollux AU. Um, I, like I said before, I stream pretty regularly. 
<clears throat> so go follow me there if you want to. And that's about it for this video, honestly. Um, everything set up the way I mostly like it. I'll, I'll transfer my backup stuff of all my photos, documents, um, other videos that I'm working on. And um, yeah, give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you want to. Um, as well, as I said before in the intro uh, of the video, I want to thank uh, Nola, or Nola Reno, I think his username is now, for being a supporter on this, uh, my first supporter on this channel. I really do appreciate it. If you want to become a supporter, it's only like uh, $4 Australian, uh, whatever currency it is for you. It may be way cheaper, way more expensive. Um, you don't have to pay for it, obviously. Um, you can just like the video, you know, sub to the channel. I know there's a lot of people that aren't sub to my channel, so please hit that sub button if you want to. Uh, comment down below if there was any uh, issues or problems that I made in today's video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.